This video will discuss a simulation method known as bootstrapping. We will cover the theory behind bootstrapping, why we use it, how to use it, and when it should be used. First, recall the point of statistics is to learn about an unknown population, like trying to estimate a population mean, mu. If we draw a sample from a population and calculate a statistic, like a sample mean, we know that the sample mean will fall close to the population mean, similar to a seed falling close to the base of a tree. But if we collected a different sample, we would get a different statistic. This is the crux of our problem. We need to know how different the sample statistics would be if we were able to actually gather multiple samples. In other words, we need to estimate the sampling variability, or the standard deviation of the statistics, from many different samples. If we were able to draw hundreds of samples and plot the mean from each of them, we know the sampling distribution would be centered around the population mean and could calculate the standard deviation of the statistics from all of our different samples. But in real life, I don't know mu and I don't see the whole population, nor do you actually collect all of these samples. We only have one sample and one seed. So what can we do with one seed? we can grow a new tree. We can create a hypothetical bootstrap population, which is just many, many copies of the original sample. Assuming the sample is representative of the population, then the bootstrap population and true population should be similar, at least in terms of their spread. Continuously sampling from the bootstrap population and obtaining many sample statistics should produce similar result as sampling repeatedly from the true population but without the time and cost the latter would require. Finally, this distribution of statistics from many bootstrap resamples, called the bootstrap distribution, will provide us what, with what we originally wanted, an estimate of the sampling variability. To estimate the spread of statistics from many, many samples without having to take many, many samples. Bootstrapping gives us an estimate of the standard deviation of a statistic, like SD of X bar or SD of P hat, which can be used in the 2SD method to create a confidence interval, or with an extra step which is discussed in the video covering section 2.2, it can allow us to conduct a hypothesis test for a single mean. Note that bootstrapping can actually be used in a wide variety of scenarios, though in this course we will limit the use of bootstrapping to working with a single quantitative variable. Now that we know the theory and reasoning behind bootstrapping, we should discuss how to actually collect a bootstrap resample. Thankfully in practice, this is fairly easy. Remember we assume the population of interest is just many, many copies of the original sample. So we can select observations from the bootstrap population by selecting observations with replacement from the original sample. Here's an example of a sample of six people. We can create a bootstrap population by creating many, many copies of this original sample. Then sampling from the bootstrap population is equivalent to sampling with replacement from the original group of six. So selecting the blonde stick figure from the bootstrap population is the same as selecting the blonde stick figure from the original sample. Then I could select the redhead from the population, which is the same as selecting this redhead from the sample. I could select this blonde from the population, which is like selecting the blonde again from the sample, which is legal since I used replacement, meaning after I selected the blonde as the first person, I put them back into the sample for the potential to be selected again. I can continue this process selecting the pregnant lady twice and the angry man. Notice that the bootstrap resample is the same size as the original sample, n equals 6. Why is that important? Because sample size impacts sampling variability. I'm using bootstrapping to estimate the sampling variability, so we must keep the sample size the same when taking a bootstrap resample. In a flowchart, we begin with the original sample and record the statistic from the observed data. Then from the original sample, I can create many bootstrap resamples by sampling with replacement. From each bootstrap resample, we would calculate the bootstrap statistic. 
plotting those bootstrap statistics would give us the bootstrap distribution. And the standard deviation of the bootstrap statistics is the estimate of sampling variability we wanted to find in the first place. In summary, to create a bootstrap resample, we will randomly select observational units with replacement from the original sample n times, where n is the sample size, and then plot the statistic from each resample. As usual, larger sample sizes result in smaller sampling variability. Be careful with this idea. There's a difference between the sample standard deviation, s, which is the variability in individual observations, and the standard deviation or standard error of the sample means, SD or SE of X bar, which is the variability from one statistic in a sample to another statistic in a different sample. Larger sample sizes affect sampling variability, SD of X bar or SE of X bar. They will not impact the standard deviation of the individual observations, S.